Hey everyone, Jump for Nintendo Life here, and today I want to take you all the way back to 2018. Now this year was following the Switch's launch that had Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild and ARMS and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Xenoblade 2 and Fire Emblem Warriors, the biggest one, obviously. But in 2018, things simmered down. We had Sushi Striker and Mario Tennis Aces, which I do think are great games, but they don't quite hold the legacy of the first year. But what Nintendo did was something quite interesting. Instead of immediately building sequels, they gave us much smaller tastes of some of the most important and famous Switch games. But they've kind of gone under the radar in that time. No one really talks about DLC years after launch. So what I want to do is go back and look at these 2018 games, because not all DLC is made equally. Breath of the Wild's DLC is the epitome of fine. <laughs> it didn't do anything major, it gave us a Korok mask and a few shrines, and by the end of the day, it was rather forgettable. But other games have given us full-fledged experiences, and these three games I'm going to talk about, I fully believe that their DLCs, their expansions, are legit sequels within the games. So without further ado, pre-recorded John, take it away. Let's begin with the biggest one, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Expansion Pass. There's no arguing that Xenoblade 2 isn't a complete game. It takes over 100 hours to beat, it's huge, it's sprawling, but then they kept adding more. The expansion pass kicked into gear in 2018 and gave us a ton of content over that year. This is sold for £27, and the main event is Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torn of the Golden Country, a brand new story. This was also sold as a standalone cartridge with no need for the main game. Torn is basically a brand new Xenoblade game. It's got its own combat system, its own region, its own characters, its own music. All the pillars you'd associate with a brand new Xenoblade are here. It's essential for fans. Torn is the prequel to the main game, but it's best enjoyed after. It's a tragic story, and you go in knowing it won't end well, and there's nothing you can do about that. You're kind of stuck in this bubble, learning more about these endearing characters and getting to love them, but it's no spoiler to say that they're doomed. And that's quite a powerful narrative. We know what happens to them, and we know what they're famous for, but experiencing that is very different. And plus, Laura? One of the best protagonists in the entire series. She's great. My favourite thing about Torna is the brevity. Most RPGs are incredibly long, and Xenoblade is no exception to that, but Torna lasted me just under 20 hours. And I'm happy it wasn't longer than that. It justifies a lot in that runtime, and while there is some padding, it kind of works. See, there's a new community tab in this game, and basically the story won't move forward until you've got to a certain community level, which basically means do a bunch of side quests. So yeah, side quests are kinda mandatory, but it does work in the story context. Torn is referenced a ton in the main game, and it's basically a titan, just like any other in the game. Xenoblade 2 has tons of these regions, but this expansion only has two. There's of course Torna, which is brand new, and then there's Gormot, and the best part of that is this is set in the past. So experiencing somewhere very familiar, but a little bit different, is quite enchanting. Kinda ghostly too, because the town is in complete ruin. Making your way through what was one of the most bustling towns in the main game is quite a jarring experience. And the combat itself is different too. It doesn't delve too far from the main game, but the big difference is both blades and drivers can attack. So you can swap from Laura to Jin, or from Adam to Mithra. And when you do so, not only can you use their moves, but there's also a status effect too. So for instance, if the enemy has break, sometimes switching can make them topple. It's really fast and dynamic compared to the main game, and while the depth isn't quite the same, for 20 hours, it's fantastic. There's no core crystals to get more blades, so what you start with is basically what you end with. It's just a really good adventure that complements and enhances the main game while providing an experience all its own. Torn is probably the best DLC I think I've ever played. It's something you shouldn't miss. And that was just one part of the expansion pass. The core Xenoblade 2 got more blades and more quests, and there was a side challenge where you can meet Shulk from the first game and get him as a blade too. Not just Shulk, but a bunch of Xenoblade characters, including Elmer from Xenoblade Chronicles X. Torna alone is worth the price, but this adds so much more. And the physical version of Torna came with the expansion pass code too, though the physical Torna now is pretty expensive. <coughs> Donkey Kong has had it a bit rough lately. I mean, yeah, it's no F-Zero or Golden Sun, but Donkey Kong is one of Nintendo's biggest franchises. This made Nintendo what it is today, so to neglect that is a pretty big thing. The last brand new Donkey Kong game in any capacity was six years ago with Mario vs Donkey Kong Tipping Stars. 
The last core Donkey Kong game was 7 years ago with Tropical Freeze. Now that did get a Switch port, but the main point is, new Donkey Kong games and Donkey Kong spin-offs have just kind of stopped. But one game went under the radar, and this is one of the best Donkey Kong spin-offs in recent memory. Mario Plus Rabbids DK Adventure. Like Xenoblade 2, this game had a season pass, although I'd say the extra content isn't quite as substantial. You got some weapons and a challenge pack, and while those were cool, the main event was of course the brand new story. Donkey Kong Adventure is basically a short sequel. It's around 7 hours long, which is still pretty beefy, and I'd say this campaign is more consistent than the main game. See, the main game had some difficulty spikes and certain sections went on a bit too long, but there's none of that here. It's all just really well paced, and there's a remix of the DK64 Island theme in here. Listen to this! The coolest part is how they changed the game. Rabbit Peach is back from the main game, but brand new to this are two characters. There's Rabbit Cranky and Flat Out Donkey Kong. He can pick up characters and explosives and enemies and just throw them. He can also clamber up to higher ground and swing around. He can use his bongos to bring enemies closer to him. The potential feels far more robust and all these abilities make this experience very different to the main game. There's no perceived difference in budget quality either. All the areas are just as expressive and vibrant and beautiful to look at, and the cutscenes, they're still great. This really is a must play for DK fans. And finally, to close off, we have Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion. Splatoon's campaign is not what I play the game for. I of course played through Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2, and I enjoyed them, but these weren't the main attractions. And with Splatoon 2 specifically, the campaign was a very similar experience to the first game. But then came Octo Expansion. This was exactly what I wanted, something very, very different. You're now in the underground depths of the subway, and the vibe is totally different. It's all dark and eerie, but it still fits Splatoon. Instead of these vibrant floating levels, it's more like you're being tested. You're thrown into these challenge rooms, and you just kind of have to figure them out and clear them. It doesn't feel overly gamey though, it feels sinister. The story slowly unfolds as you go further in, and the climax is the best in Splatoon history. They pulled no punches. There's unique mechanics, new music, new everything. This is basically the Halo 3 ODST of Splatoon. The same core structure, but a totally different experience and vibe. And plus, you get Octolings in multiplayer too. So what do you guys think about these expansions? Have you played them yourself? Have you forgotten about them? And do you still sometimes revisit them? Are there any other DLC expansions that you believe are on par with these? Be sure to let us know in the comments below, and of course, go to that subscribe button and extend it via... Mon d don't, don't pay for it though, but extend it via money like, like it were a DLC expansion. This is a bad analogy. And I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Oh.